Let's go to page 20 now and learn how to get through the spelling data quickly and, and effectively along with the type of lesson plan that I would um, do. Now remember that you have four categories for spelling. There is what we call pre-phonetic. I'm just going to write out pre because I have limited space and patience. Pre-phonetic, phonetic, transitional, and conventional. Pre-phonetic, remember, is the scribble stage where they might draw you something that you've asked them to spell. If that can, word, for example, were bread, the child may just scribble you some bread. If they happen to give you some random symbols, like the number one, a triangle, and a happy face, then uh, this is a little bit more advanced than just pure scribbling, because the child understands that there's some symbolic nature to the language, and it does show some progress, even though it's completely mm, psychotic, I guess. Uh, the phonetic stage. This is spelling by dominant sound. Perhaps the initial sound of bread, or the initial two sounds of bread or all of the dominant sounds in bread, or even very late phonetic spelling of B-R-E-D, clearly phonetic, because it's by the sounds that they hear in the word. This certainly shows more progress than pre-phonetic spelling, but it is not as advanced as transitional spelling. And transitional spelling is quite simple. Transitional spelling is spelling by pattern, where they attempt a pattern but mess it up. For example, B-R-A-D-E would be an example of a transitional spelling, and so would B-R-A-E-D. That would also be a transitional spelling. Well, if you get spelling data on the test, you'll have to describe the student's current level of spelling. To do so, you have to read each of the words and decide what the complexity is. So let's start up here with the target word. I'll highlight that for you uh, here. When we look at snow, snow has actually two complexities. There is a blend in the initial position of the word, and there is a word family, a long O, rhyme. In cake, there is a hard sound at the beginning, and there is a silent E at the end. Slow, there is a blend in initial position, that is uh, SL. Let me try to get that right. Sorry, I was going to write out blend, and I changed my mind. SL, for example, and OW. Kite has a hard sound at the beginning of it. Silent E at the end. Blow, for example, has a blend in onset position, a long O in rhyme position. Quick is clearly a sight word because it's really hard to sound out. There's so much going on in it. Uh, some, too, is a sight word because if it followed the silent E rule, it would be pronounced som, but it isn't, so it's a sight word. When we look at what the child is able to do in snow, cake, slow, kite, blow, quick, and sum, you could certainly describe the strengths that the child has, and that is encoding, for example, blends an onset position, encoding hard k sounds, encoding blends, encoding hard sounds, encoding blends. And for quick and sum, really, that's just pure phonetic level stuff. Let's start at the bottom with sum. This is a phonetic spelling. It is not transitional. There's really no pattern to be spelled in the first place. And in order for this to be a transitional spelling, maybe, he would have had to have stuck the silent E at the end. He didn't, so it's all by dominant sound. And the same is true for quick. Now the errors in blow, kite, slow, cake, and snow, I'm reading those in reverse, are clearly transitional. The child, for example, is overgeneralizing OE to a number of these words to blow, for example, to slow, for example, and snow, for example. And then here, the child is um, just not performing very well with silent E. It is an attempt at the silent E pattern, so we wouldn't call that phonetic, because the child isn't trying to write for kite. Uh, right here, I've drawn the arrow. He's not trying to write ka -e it or something like that, nor in cake is it ka ek. It is an attempt at a pattern, but a failed attempt. To adequately describe these spellings, then, I think it's plain that we have some phonetic and we have some transitional. And the phonetic spellings are clearly sight words. The transitional spellings are clearly based on two different types of words, O-W and silent E. 
Now, when I show you the answer in a moment, all I did is described the weaknesses, his misspellings of the sight words, his misspellings of the OW rhyme and the um, silent E. You could say, if you wanted to add and really do a, a bang up job on here, is that he does have some conventional encoding for blend patterns and for hard sounds. You certainly could do that, with the exception, of course, of the sight word down below, quick. He's just got a mess going on there. I didn't do this, however. If you want to really strive and try to um, really get this stuff, go ahead. If you just want to cheat and not cheat, if you just want to do it the easy way, then just do it as you'll see in a moment. And what you see on your screen now is the uh, solution, the answer. It's not perfect. There are some issues in here that I need to uh, to resolve. There's there's nothing major. My opening is okay. I say, for example, let me highlight it as I read it. The student spelling assessment revealed that she is at the phonetic stage of spelling when she spells the words quick and sum, K-W-K and S-U-M. The assessment also revealed that the student is at the transitional level when she spells O-W and silent E words. For example, she spelled blow for blow, snow for snow, cake for cake, and kite for kite. Begin by focusing on encoding silent E words, cake, kite, etc. Now, I just do a making words activity. That's it. I say that we're going to use a set of cards with the words mat, rat, and kit written on them. We'll have a separate note card with the letter E written on it. We'll have a whiteboard and a pen and a pocket chart. I elected to do silent E, so you can see how to do making words with silent E, just in case you get stuck with it. And it's just a matter of you have mat and mate. You pair them together to make the long vowel. The only minor difference between this making words activity and the others is that you have to teach a rule. First, we display the note card with the word mat for the student on a pocket chart. We add the note card with the letter E behind the word mat to make the word mate. Notice I put it in front of here, which would have made it E mat, which is totally stupid. So be sure you put behind right there when you rewrite it. Teach the rule that the silent E makes the vowel say its name is in mate. Add the note card with the letter E to the other words, like rat and kit, and have the student read each new word aloud. Have the student write the new words on the whiteboard, mate, rate, kite, and ever read each word aloud. This last sentence is overkill, so I'm going to scribble through it. I was going to have the child uh, write the word cake to try to apply the rule of step six, but my God, just keep it at step five. Clearly, we have teacher modeling. Clearly, we have guided. Clearly, we have independent. And there's really nothing much more to it than that. And the benefit is really straightforward. First, we name the activity. It's a silent E word-making activity that will help the student transition from the transitional spelling stage to the conventional spelling stage for silent E words because look at what we did. We taught a rule. We asked the child to apply it by seeing, saying, and writing silent E words. Done. All right, I'll pause this uh, before making some uh, summary comments, and then you can write it up. And um, to summarize, I'll simply say that for spelling data and spelling lessons, make sure that you have them spelling. I know it sounds like it's obvious, but um, I don't want you to forget and accidentally in step number five throw in some kind of decodable text. So go ahead and pause this now so you can get down my version of the uh, needs, the lesson plan. And I'll scroll up uh, two for the benefit. And be sure that you get rid of step six. It's pretty useless. All right, thanks. Got to go. Bye.